How to Diagnose a Home Furnace This video is designed to show you how to find out what is wrong with your heater. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify the most common parts of a furnace and describe what their function is. This is a furnace. It is designed to take the heat produced by burning fuel and safely transfer it to the inside of your living space. The fuel is shot through a heat exchanger. While it is combusting, it produces heat. This heats up the heat exchanger, and then your blower blows air across it and into your house via ducts to each room. This process is done in a particular sequence so that the maximum safety is achieved. After all, we are dealing with burning gases. Your thermostat calls for heat by sending 24 volts to the W terminal. You may have a white wire that is attached to it. In reality, this could be any color and can be very misleading. Your W terminal is for heat. W1 would be for low heat and W2 would be for high heat. Your circuit board sends voltage, typically 115 volts, to your inducer draft motor. This motor is designed to run before your burner comes on to get rid of any unburned gases. This motor is also supposed to remove exhaust from your furnace and vents it to the outdoors. This is a pilot light. It is designed to stay on at all times. This is what ignites the main flame. This is an intermittent pilot. This will ignite the pilot every time the ignition sequence is initiated. This is a hot surface igniter. It has a hot element that heats up and glows every time the ignition sequence is initiated. This is a spark igniter. When heat is called for, the igniter will fire off much like a spark plug. This ignites the main flame directly without use of a pilot light. Your main burner is now turned on. This is achieved by sending 24 volts to the MV terminal on the gas valve. This could be varied by having a smart valve. These valves have pin connectors and are hard to diagnose. This is the full sequence. First the inducer draft motor starts. Then the igniter lights the pilot light. Then the main burner comes on. And now the blower comes on. While your burner is going, you have several sensors which protect your unit from overheating. Rollout sensor. Call this because it is supposed to sense flames which are rolling out from where they are supposed to be. These can be located at the burner, on the blower housing, and on the flue pipe itself. High limit. This sensor just breaks circuit when it gets too hot. In other types of units, there is also a fan switch. This will sense the heat in the unit and tell the fan when to turn on and when the unit overheats. This will also turn off the heat and keep the fan running until it cools down. This is typically found in older units. There is a separate circuit for a sensor that tells whether or not the inducer draft motor is running. Vacuum switch. This uses a hose to link the switch to the housing in order to sense vacuum. The vacuum pulls a diaphragm that closes a switch. Centrifugal. This uses a set of weights in the butt of the inducer draft motor to close the switch. Hall effect. This is an end cap to the motor and has three wires, red, white, and black. This senses shaft rotation. 
and sends a signal to a circuit board. This type is usually diagnosed by a series of flashes on the circuit board. These can be deciphered by a legend, usually on the inside panel of the unit. If any of these switches are open circuit, or the vacuum switch is still closed from the last burn, the unit will not ignite. Usually if any of these are open, the blower motor will run continuously, along with the inducer draft motor. If your unit is locked out, you should shut down the power to the unit, make sure the thermostat is not calling for either heat or cool, and turn it back on. You should also try to reset any manual switches. Some switches have a manual reset, a little red button on the back of the switch. Be very careful here. Unit could be hot and could also have electricity going to the switch. Try to reset with a wooden or plastic handle. Also, if at all possible, make sure that the unit has no power going to it. Once the main burner is lit, it should burn for about 30 seconds before the fan turns on. The fan is turned on by the circuit board at a terminal labeled fan, heat, or low. This is usually 115 volts. If the fan is not turned on, you should check the voltage at this terminal. If you get voltage and the fan is not turning on, you have a bad motor or a bad capacitor. The capacitor is attached to the motor via two brown wires.